guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to show you this ginormous piece of furniture that I just built for our local library. I made it in four separate pieces, and it's going in their children's reading area. So they wanted something that would open up for the center for displays for the reading time, and then that would close up to look like a nice stylish piece of furniture when it's not in use. Over the last two weeks, I shared how I built this bottom dresser piece and these two side cabinets, and today I'm tying everything together and finishing off this entire entertainment center series by showing you how I built this top sliding door cabinet. I've got the plans for this entire entertainment center linked below with all of the details, but if you're ready to get building, let's go. This sliding door cabinet was actually the easiest, but also the largest part of this project to build. It's basically just a really big box with some trim. So I started out by cutting down the plywood that I would use for the main carcass of the cabinet. I cut my sheets into 16 inch wide strips so that I'd waste as little as possible. I used my rip cut and my circular saw to cut down my sheets and if you're interested in how I cut down my plywood, I have a video on that that I'll link up here in the corner. Once I had ripped four strips, so one full sheet plus another 16 inches from a second sheet, I cut the sides and the middle dividers down on the miter saw and then began assembling. I drilled pocket holes into the ends of the top and bottom strips and then I tried to assemble the main box first, like shown here. All was fine until we tried to flip it over and we realized that since it was an 8 foot tall cabinet with 8 foot tall ceilings, it just wasn't going to work out. So I disassembled it and tried it this way. And that worked fine until I realized that I didn't mean to assemble the bottom flush with the side edges. Because I was installing a face frame later in the project and using a 1x3 at the bottom, I needed to install the bottom panel 2.5 inches from the bottom edge of the sides. So I removed it and reinstalled it. And this was already kind of a stressful glue up slash assembly. So as you can imagine, I was a little flustered at this point. But once I finally had the main body screwed together, I could add the middle dividers. I've detailed all of the measurements for this on the plans linked below, but I simply installed these using wood screws from the top and the bottom like shown. And that completed the carcass build. Next up was adding the back. The original piece that we roughly based this design on had kind of a beadboard type backing on it. To give this that same look without looking like cheap beadboard, I used tongue and groove pine. In my local area, they call this rail car boards. I guess they used to use this in railroad cars as flooring. I don't know. Anyway, it's basically tongue and groove 1x6s that are flat on one side and have a V cut in the middle on the other side. So I cut these down to length and put the V-cut sides on the inside of the cabinet. I went ahead and stained these boards individually before installing them to make things a little easier. Then before moving on, I went ahead and stained the inside because it's much easier to do now than it will be to come back and do it later. Then, starting at the center, I began attaching these boards to the carcass using wood screws. I worked my way out and once I got to the end, I measured and cut to fit two pieces to go on each end. I just ripped these down on the table saw. Now it was time to add the face frame. I was installing sliding doors onto this frame and since the rail and the wheels would need about five inches of clearance space, I used a one by six at the top, but used one by threes everywhere else on the face frame. I screwed this together using wood glue and pocket holes and screws.
Once the main frame was together, I added pieces in the middle that will go over the dividers as well. And once the entire face frame was assembled, I applied some wood glue to the cabinet and nailed this face frame in place. Now it's time to dress things up a little bit. So I trimmed out the sides to match the bottom part of the entertainment center by simply gluing and nailing 1x2s onto the sides, 1x3s at the top and the bottom, and then just lining the inside with cove molding. When all of that was finished, I added some crown molding along the top and then painted the entire thing, everything that's not already stained, I painted white. And I'll be honest, I did not get a video of that because I was in a hurry to get this project finished and delivered. Now that the cabinet was complete, it was time to add the doors. I built two doors using three quarter inch plywood. I cut two identical doors large enough that when put together, it would cover the middle section of the cabinet and then when opened up, they would cover the outside sections individually. Once the plywood was trimmed down to size, I decided that it would be cool to cut some grooves in it to give it just a little bit of extra character. So I placed the doors side by side and drew a straight line across the middle of them. Then I used a straight edge to draw four diagonal lines from corner to corner. I used this scrap 1x4 to draw parallel lines out from these diagonals. Now I needed to cut along these lines. So I adjusted my circular saw to only cut about a quarter of an inch deep and then I used my Craig AccuCut track to run the saw along. You could use a straight edge here, but this worked super, super fast, so I highly recommend using a track. Once the grooves were cut, I glued and nailed some 1x4s along the edges and one in the middle to finish up the doors. I painted and distressed them to match the cabinet and then I installed them. And again, I apologize, but at this point things were getting really crazy. My shop was a total wreck, was full of stuff, and I was on a tight deadline. So I didn't get the footage on how I made my own sliding door hardware, but I'll explain exactly what I did and I promise it's super simple. The only thing you really miss me getting a video of is just drilling a few holes in the metal bars. I actually saved a whole lot of money making the barn door hardware myself versus buying a kit. I actually went to my local metal shop and purchased an eighth of an inch by one and a half inch thick steel flat stock. And then I used one inch thick uh, metal steel flat stock for the um, pieces that attach to the door here. So I drilled holes to screw lag bolts into the door and then another hole to attach these garage door pulleys, which is actually what I use for the wheels. I used five lag bolts and some washers for spacers. So what I did was basically hang the doors here and see how far away this bar needed to be so that the doors wouldn't run rub on the cabinet. And that's how many washers that I put in between here. And I actually, if you can see, I used the nut on the back so that I could tighten these all together. And I actually ended up mounting the doors so close to the rail that I didn't need anything to keep it from falling off because if I lift this up, the door hits the rail before this actually comes off the rail. So there's no way that this door can just like fall off of the rail, which is handy. And like I mentioned before, this will be going in our local library. So once I get this delivered, I'll actually mount some little L brackets along here to prevent the door from sliding off the end of the rail. So I just haven't installed those yet because I'm gonna remove these doors off the rail to transport it and install it in the library. And for the shelves in the side cabinet, I just drilled shelf pin holes so that the shelves would be adjustable and they could put them wherever they wanted. If you remember from the last two videos, the library also requested that all of the doors and drawers on this piece lock. I found these locks that I could mount onto the doors and when you lower the lever, a metal rod drops down into a hole that I drilled in the dresser below it. 
Once locked, the lever won't raise back up, but once it's unlocked, you can lift the lever, which lifts the rod and allows the door to slide again. Likely, you won't be adding locks onto your build, but just in case, I will link those locks that I used here in the blog post in the description. And that completed the Entertainment Center build. It's been a long one, friends. Thanks for sticking with me. What I really love about this design is that it's broken down into separate pieces, so if you didn't want to build the entire thing, you can still build each individual section as a standalone piece. That also makes it easier to transport and move. Prior planning. <laughs> If you missed any of the other videos, be sure to check those out as well and be sure to subscribe to see what other projects I've got coming soon. Thanks so much for watching and until next time, happy building.